Hi, this is Calculus section 3.3, and we're going to be dealing with the first derivative test to determine relative extrema. And before we do that, I want you to try this warm up problem just to review what we did last section with the mean value theorem. So go ahead and pause and try this first one. So remember that the mean value theorem deals with the slope of the secant, and we show that the slope of the secant is the same as the slope of the um, tangent line somewhere on this interval as long as this is a smooth continuous function. So what we do is we take this x value, and both of these are x values. So we take both those x values, find the y values from our original function, then we can find the slope of the secant. Slope of the secant is negative 1 half. To find out where the slope of the tangent is equivalent, we have to take the derivative. So we take f prime of our function, and then we set it equal to the negative 1 half, and you get those two values uh, using your calculator, or else you can use the quadratic formula. So hopefully you were able to get that, uh, bring questions to class. Now moving on to the first derivative. The first derivative, let me get back to this one. With the first derivative, it tells us a lot about the function. And for us, first of all, the first derivative will tell us if we are increasing, decreasing, or constant. So that would be our first objective today, is to use the first derivative to find the intervals of increasing, decreasing values. Second objective is to find uh, where relative maxes and relative mins come in. So if I think about Mr. Slope Finder and his skis, if my tangent is positive, the slope of the tangent is positive, then that tells me that my function is increasing. So increasing is f prime of x is greater than 0. Decreasing, f prime of x is less than 0. So that's where my slope is. And then constant, this would be where f prime of x is equal to zero. And so definitions of increasing, decreasing, we did this in pre-calculus too, for any value left of another, uh, and uh, these are x values, left of another x values implies that the y value to the left is less than the y value to the right. So if I take x1 and x2, sorry, these should be subscripts, and with x1 and x2, x1 is left of x2, and then f, f of x is less than f of x2. I'm not doing a very good job explaining that, but just left and right. And decreasing is if I have x1, x2, this value will be greater than this value. And that's what this says down here. That's increasing, decreasing. Now, if we want to develop a test to see if we have a relative max or min, what do we want to do? Well, I'll come back to that because that's something down the line. We just want to do um, intervals of increasing and decreasing right now. So f prime of x is greater than 0, increasing, less than 0, decreasing, and then constant. So what we need to find are the critical values. So let's do this example here, and you can read this as well. So if I find the critical values, that will split up my potential increasing, decreasing values. So this one right here would be 1.5x squared minus 3x minus 1. My critical values are from up above. Oh, I guess not. Um, I got this. And so x is equal to, so then I have my zeros of my derivative, which are my critical values, or critical numbers. And what I want to do now is split those up, or use those to split up my intervals. So I have some different values here. And these would be my x values, negative 0.291. And I use a little number line to figure out where we're at, and then 2.291. And then if I talk about f prime of x, well, at these two values, f prime of x is 0. What I want to do is figure out since these numbers will split up where I'm going to be positive or negative on this function, what I do is I pick a point maybe to the left here, for instance, negative 1. And if I take negative 1 and plug it in here, 
see what kind of value I'm going to get. Well, it looks like I'm going to get a positive. So I'm going to get a positive value when I plug it in. So that means that on this interval, my f is increasing because f prime is positive. Now, if I plug something in here, great value in here would be 0. If I do 0, I get negative 1, so that would be negative. Take a value here, for instance, 3. 3 squared, I'm thinking this is going to be positive. You can double check that. But I'm just plugging in a particular value in this interval to just see if it's positive or negative. So with that, then, I can summarize this. This would be f is going to be increasing on this interval, it's going to be decreasing on this interval, and it's going to be increasing on this one. And another way to say this is that if I see f prime positive, I go up. Negative, I go down. Positive, I go up. Okay? So the intervals where this is, and I should write this formally too, is that uh, increasing, and this is for f, f is increasing from negative infinity to negative 0.291 and also from 2.291 to infinity. You do not need to include this. If you included it, uh, these endpoints would be okay. But usually we don't do that. And f decreasing then would be from 0.291 to 2.291. So those would be the intervals of increasing and decreasing. So going back to this example, what I like to do is to split this up. And if this is f prime is less than 0, that tells me that f is decreasing. And if this one is f prime equal to 0, this tells me that f is constant. And if this one tells me that f prime of x is greater than 0, then f is increasing. So you use that terminology there. And so you just got to be careful with what you're saying. f prime of x less than 0, f decreasing. So just make sure your language is appropriate there. OK, then uh, now we want to de develop a test if we have a relative max or relative min using calculus. Now we can solve these points. This one looks like a relative max. This one looks like a relative min. But with calculus, we need to verify it. And so what we're going to talk about is that if I have a situation where I go from increasing to decreasing, and when I say from, I mean from left to right. This one is increasing. This one's decreasing. Now, in calculus terms, though, I would not say that. I would say that f prime of x is greater than 0 to f prime of x is less than 0. If that's the case, then this point right here would be a relative max. And similarly, f prime is negative to f prime going positive. That would make this a relative min. So how we say this is for a relative min, f prime changes from negative to positive. And for a relative max, we say that f prime changes from positive to negative. I maybe want to write out those words. And so this turns out to be our first derivative test. And so it's going to tell us where we're going to have relative maxes and relative mins. So we're going to be finding these points. Well, those are critical values. So we'll find the critical values, and then we'll test points on either side to show of the derivatives to show that I change from positive to negative, or negative to positive, or neither. And if it's neither, then it's not a relative max nor a relative min. Okay. So let's go down to the next page. Here's the first derivative test, and it's exactly what I just said. You can go through and read this, and like I said, it's exactly what I just said. And then this point right here would be a neither, and this one as well. So it's like Mr. Slopefinder coming here, bottoming out on the hill, 
and then all of a sudden going down again. That would be a neither relative max nor relative min. Okay, and then you're going to set up a label number line and then also summarize. We'll, t we'll show you this now. Okay, so we're going to use the first derivative test to find the local or relative maxes and mins. And then I would graph with your calculator and check these things out. I think that's always a great thing to do. So the first thing you do, find your critical values. So I'm going to go f prime of x is equal to 6x squared minus 6x. And so I'm going to set this equal to 0. So I get x equal to, everybody knows 1, but people forget 0. So make sure you include 0 there. So what I'm going to do is set up my number line. And I have the value 0, and I have 1. Now I want to see how I'm changing. And so I label this with f prime of x. Take x's, plug them in. So if I take in a negative value, it's nice to do it right here. Negative, negative makes a positive. And so this one looks like it might be a relative max. Let's see what happens on this side, 0.5. If I plug in 0.5, this would be positive. This would be negative. Positive times a negative is a negative. And so it looks like I'm going from increasing to decreasing. And then over here, take a value 2, for instance. 2 makes this positive. So for my f, this tells me that f is increasing, decreasing, increasing, and that kind of tells you the story. So at x equal to 0, f of x has a relative min at x e I'm sorry. Let me pause this a second. relative max, sorry, and it is at x equal to 0 because, now this is what you have to write, because f prime changes from positive to negative. Now if you don't write this, then it's not really correct. You have to justify it by writing out this situation. So if it's a relative max, f prime changes from positive to negative. That's what you got to write. And it's calculus. You do not say that because f changes from increasing to decreasing. I can teach a fourth grader that information. But for calculus, we have to say that f prime changes from positive to negative. And I'll summarize the minimum too. So at x equal to 1, f of x has a relative min because f prime changes from negative to positive. Once again, I'm using calculus to justify this. Moving on to example number two. Uh, why don't you try this one? Pause this, and I'll show the solution and just walk through the solution. So pause right now and try that one. So those are my critical values. And then I set up a labeled sign chart. X and F prime of X. And then I put in my 0 and negative square root of 5 uh, halves and positive square root of 5 halves. Now you check values, and this is what confuses some people sometimes. But if I take the square root of 2.5, well, going left of that, I would say that like negative 3 would be an easy answer. If I plug in a negative 3 here, what happens? Well, this piece is negative. It's easier to plug in the factor form. This would be, I'm sorry, this would be, if a negative 3, this would be positive, And this would be positive. So overall, this is positive. So I'm going to be increasing there. This one, if I take negative uh, 1, Plug it in here, that would be positive, and that would be positive. Uh, and I made a mistake there. I knew something was wrong. Positive, and so this one would be a negative here. And then if I take in a 1, that would be negative there. And that one would be negative, so that would be positive. And then if I plug in a 3, that would be negative, and that would be positive, so overall negative. And so I'm going to be increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. So my summary then is that I'm going to have relative maxes at x equal to plus or minus 
square root of 5 halves because y f prime changes from positive to negative. And then relative min at x equal to 0 because f prime changes from negative to positive. And putting these little things out for f really help. I mean, it just summarizes it so you don't make mistakes. Yeah. Uh, try this one, and just remember that you're going to get a critical value at 0 because your derivative will be undefined there. But also, our original function is undefined, so that might mess things up as well. So try that one, and then I'll show you the solution. So if you take the derivative, set it equal to 0, I like getting fraction equal to fraction, and then just cross multiply, then I get rid of the exponents here, and then these are my critical values. I include 0 because I'm dividing by 0, but regardless, our original function is going to have a vertical asymptote at 0. So when that happens is that that can't be a relative max or relative min because you were undefined there. And so here, if I do my summary chart, I got increasing, decreasing, decreasing, increasing. So I'm going to have a relative min here and a relative max there because f prime changes from positive to negative. And here because f prime changes from negative to positive. All right, so make sure you summarize that. Now, uh, the last pieces we'll probably go through in class, but I want you to think about these and summarize for yourself. What do we use the first derivative test for? How do we find absolute extrema? So that was uh, 3.1. Absolute, you have to also include endpoints, yes? Can a relative max be an absolute min? Obviously, no. <laughs> because we can't have a relative max be an absolute min because the points around the relative max are going to be less than the max. So it can't be. Can a value that is not a relative min be an absolute min? Yes. And I'll let you think about that. Turns out to be the end point. All right. So that's the end of this section, 3.3. First derivative test, we'll be using this one quite a bit and increasing and decreasing as well. Thanks. Have a great day.